All right, this is, I'm starting this video over because people keep fucking calling me. Anyways, hey, it's me. I am making a video today because yesterday I had a consultation for a lung transplant and I wanted to go over how that went and what happened during that and like everything like that. So, um, the transplant center that I went to, like where I normally go, they don't do lung transplants. So they referred me to someone else who's about two hours from where I live, um, which isn't not that bad. My friend Trey brought me, which is really nice one because the hospital is like in the city and I hate driving, I hate driving in general, unless it's like a highway or something, but like in the city, I get really stressed out because all the cars are so close and like, so um, it's nice to have him just driving, but also it's really nice to have him there. He's very good at being pretty stable when my emotions are a little wacky, <laughs> which uh, I was really worried about happening because I, I had been, honestly yesterday I wasn't very anxious, but like every day for the past two weeks leading up to yesterday, I was extremely anxious about this appointment, not feeling well, and just like, I don't know, I, it was not good. So, anyways, we went yesterday, the appointment was at noon, we got there at 11, like to the area, we could see the hospital, and somehow we still ended up being five minutes freaking late to the appointment, because we had to park and all this stuff, and the traffic was just insane. And I was like, how the heck did we get here an hour early and we're still late, but whatever. So it was fine, like they still took us and whatever. And I met four or five different people, one of which who's like the main transplant surgeon person, I don't really know. But it all went really well. I really liked <clears throat> the I really liked the staff. One thing that I really was worried about is, and I think, like, I haven't had much issues with this now that I'm an adult, but when I was uh, a kid growing up, I had issues with my doctor um, because he didn't really offer a lot of emotional support. And, like, one, I have a lot of emotions, <laughs> but also, like, um, having CF or having any sort of chronic illness or whatever there's a lot of emotions that come along with that and I felt very like unheard when I was growing up because I didn't feel like my mom listened to me I didn't feel like the doctors listened to me and I had all this like emotional baggage that came with it and all I ever heard was well you just need to do your medicine and clearly like that's true you have to do your medicine in order to stay healthy. I'm not fucking stupid. But there were all these like emotional like heaviness things. I don't know, that just really, I needed a lot of time to process and I needed help processing it and nobody really seemed to give a shit. And so I kind of like worry with that, with any sort of like new doctors or anything because I just don't know and I, I kind of expect doctors to be more focused on the physical, this is what your body can handle, this is what you need to do, blah blah blah, and then like they kind of forget that like I'm a person with feelings and not just like this machine that you can program to do everything that they're supposed to do. Um, but I really liked, I really liked the CF team that I have as an adult and then also I really liked the doctors that I met yesterday for the lung transplant thing, they were like very aware of the emotional burden of CF and getting a lung transplant. Um, Cause this doctor, I think she, like she's a transplant doctor or surgeon or whatever, but um, she also like knows a lot about CF cause a lot of CF patients get lung transplants. But that was really nice to like, I don't know, feel like I was being heard. And it was also nice because like when I went there, they're, you know, getting a list of all my medications and everything like that. And I'm like, 
telling them, hey, like, this is what I am prescribed to do, but a lot of the times I don't do it because I'm really having trouble emotionally just with having a fucking disease. And, I like, that always, like, really gets me, like, nervous or anxious because a lot of doctors are, like, what I, what I feel like they're telling me is I don't care how you feel just to get the fuck over it. And it just kind of makes me want to shut down. But they were very understanding of everything and, like, very, not, like, they don't, like, excuse, like, oh, well, you don't feel good about it, just don't do it. Like, they're, they're not like that, but, um, they, like, listened to what I said and, like, treated my feelings with, like, respect. And that's, you know, nice. And, um, also, it made me feel better. I don't know why this never clicked before. Maybe nobody said it like this straightforward, but I was talking about, um, my tube feedings. I'm very underweight because of my CF. <clears throat> and one of the things that I'm supposed to do, oh my god, it's like so hot in here. Um, one of the things that I'm supposed to do is, um, be hooked up to a uh, feeding tube at night and get extra calories that way. And for whatever reason, that gives me like the utmost anxiety. Like even like thinking about it just, it's just so much. I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's just a lot emotionally for me to handle and, um, that was one of the things that I was explaining to them, and the doctor said, basically, because I was telling her, I'm like, I don't know, like, why it's an issue, but I think, like, part of it is that, like, ideally, I would just eat what I'm supposed, like, the amount that I'm supposed to eat, and I wouldn't have to do this, and so, like, doing it feels like a failure, even though clearly not doing it, I'm still not eating what I'm supposed to and whatever. But she, like, wasn't, like, being, like, rude or anything, but she, like, just kind of looked at me and was, like, you know, like, there's no way that you can eat what you're supposed to eat to gain the weight that you need to gain. And, I don't know, that kind of, like, clicked better than anything that anyone said before. Because, like, even though, like, I knew that, because I'm supposed to have, like, probably around 4,000 calories a day in order to be able to gain weight. That's like double the amount of a normal person and I'm sick all the time and when you're sick you don't eat as much. So it's like, seriously, come on. But that was like, I don't know, that was good to hear because it kind of like, I think I still had it in my brain that I just need to eat better and then I'll gain weight even though like that hasn't been working and I haven't been able to eat better. It was like, that was kind of like my goal was just to get better with eating. Um, whereas like, she basically was like, that's not realistic, stop. <laughs> um, so I don't know, I feel a little bit better about, not that I've done my tube feeds, I didn't do them last night, but emotionally I feel a little bit better about them. So, <clears throat> I'm happy for that. They want me to come back, I think, in six weeks. I have to make... I forget if they're going to call me or I'm going to call them. But basically to schedule um, an evaluation. So I, I would go there for four days. Or go in the area. Like I'm not in the hospital, but I go to the hospital for four days in a row. And they do all this testing to make sure that, like my body can handle a lung transplant and I won't just die on the operating table or whatever. So that's a little nerve wracking and um, but like I'm open to it and I want to do it. My main issue right now is they were talking a lot about like support system and I have a very good support system. I have people who love me. I have people who want to take care of me and all this stuff. Um, but I have an issue with, like, asking for help. I think I made a video about this, like, a few weeks ago. But, like, I'm just now getting okay with asking my friends to, like, cook dinner for me or, like, help me clean my apartment or, like, things like that that are relatively simple, take not long, like, it takes, like, 
I don't know, like you come over for a few hours and then you leave. Like it's not really hindering that much. But when they're talking about the uh, transplant and stuff, they're like, yeah, after you get your transplant for six months, you'll need someone who's your primary caregiver who basically just helps you do everything and they can't really have a job for these six months and like just like stuff that's really like life changing it's not like oh I'm gonna take two hours out of my day and go clean Bryn's room oh I'm gonna take six months out of my life and help Bryn around the house and probably get tired of me because like, I'll get tired of them. Like, that's what happens when you're around people. And I don't, like... I really hate the feeling of needing people. Um, and I hate asking people for things. But, like... It's a really big... And these are really big things. And so... I'm working on that, I think, a lot, too. Um, because I have no idea how I'm gonna... Feel asking people to help me. It's just a lot. Um, but I also think that, like, it'll work out, like, whatever I need. I do believe that, like, it will be okay. It's just a lot to kind of process. Um, but overall, I feel really good about it. And I feel... I don't know. I just feel good. Even though I'm so anxious. Um, and also, I... Oh, they have... Okay, so, for those of you who have CF, you may have heard about the... They're calling it, I think, the triple combo drug. But if you've watched my other videos, you know that I've been on Simdeco now for a little while. And there's a new drug that's similar to that, but basically better, that's supposed to be coming out, I think, in 2020. But, um, the... The transplant hospitals have, um, early access to it. And so I was asking them about that, and they're gonna try to get me started on that, like, now. Which would be awesome. Uh, cause it's just awesome. So, I'm hoping that that works out. Um... I, yeah, I'm very excited for that, if that all works out. I've been, not that this is, really has to do with the transplant, but I have been doing my insulin now since I've gotten out of the hospital, which, granted, has been less than a week, but I've been doing it with every meal, I've been watching my blood sugars, um, so I'm happy that I've gotten better with that and that I made like a conscious effort and I think it's a little bit easier for me than other things because I can like watch like okay I do my insulin and then I watch my blood sugar go from like really high to normal or whatever it is like so there like I can see the fact that like I'm doing a good job um but I think I'm really worried too that like for the tube feeds and for the lung treatments like it's hard for me to see the progress because I'll gain weight and then I'll get sick and I'll lose it or I'll get healthy and then I'll get sick and I'm still doing my nebulizers and I'm frustrated because I'm doing what I'm supposed to and I'm not getting healthy and it's really like frustrating so I think that plays a part you know but my cat's out there uh but I'm almost done with this video but anyways uh I think that's a part of it too like even when I do things right, there's still this, like, failure factor that's just gonna happen. And I really have a hard time with that. So, that's why I have a hard time doing my nebulizers and my tube feeds. But I'm working on getting there. I'm happy with the small step of doing my insulin. Um, I'm really happy with the way that the transplant meeting went yesterday. And... I don't know, but I just wanted to update everybody if anyone was interested, or if not, it doesn't matter because I don't have a lot to do today, so I just wanted to film a video, so, yeah. <sighs> Alright, I'm all finished.